Hey everyone, and welcome to episode four of my vlog. My name is Stephen Wagner, and you can visit my website at stephenwagner.com. Link is on the bottom right. Well, it's been a busy couple of months. Work has been nuts, and as I'm sure a lot of you have been very busy as well, dealing with Apache Log4j mitigations. Now, with the majority of the work that I've been doing for the last uh, couple of years, uh, probably about 80% um, in the last month, uh, year have been related to VMware Horizon. So as you can imagine, I've had uh, quite a few customers call me to assist with their Log4j mitigations for their VMware Horizon and VMware environments. Uh, there's quite a bit of work and it's not just VMware products that are involved. There are a lot of applications out there that uh, have used Apache Log4j for uh, uh, various components of their uh, software packages. Now, uh, as I'm sure some of you are aware, VMware does have some knowledge base articles where they provide information on how to mitigate. These were changing on a very regular basis in the month of December, and I think there was also a couple of updates in January. Uh, for VMware Horizon specifically, one of the most recent mitigations um, were to upgrade to VMware Horizon 8 version 2111.1. Um, now, there's other components in the environment. I've had a, I've noticed a lot of environments where people mitigate their connection server, their UAG, but they forget to mitigate their VMware Horizon agents. This is a big deal. Technically, a lot of the agents are not actually vulnerable to Log4j unless if the vRealize uh, Operations Manager agent is installed. Um, even though most of my customers don't use this package, one would assume that it wasn't installed in their agent. However, when you jump on these environments and you check the registry to see what features are involved, a lot of companies have actually installed that vRealize operations agent on their uh, VMware Horizon agent. So it is loaded on their VMware virtual machines. Now that does make it vulnerable. And so it's important to either remove this or mitigate properly to version 2111.1. Um, all I can say is don't mess around with this. I have actually been called into environments that have been compromised. They've had to redeploy UAGs. They've had to deal with connection servers. Um, NHS in the United Kingdom came out with some information about how the VMware Horizon connection servers are being exploited. Um, one of the biggest things that I recommend doing is, is, you know, it doesn't matter if you have security software installed or not, um, log on to your connection server and view the VMware Horizon program files directory and do a, a wildcard search based on date modified and look at all the files that are inside of the VMware Horizon directory that have been modified in December or modified in January. Um, you wanna pay extra attention. I think it's an ABS or abg-worker.js file uh, that has actually been used. That's where they modify that file to initiate a whole bunch of PowerShell scripts um, once the system is uh, exploited. There's another of other uh, attack vectors that have been used as well. But seriously, take a look at the modified files in your VMware Horizon directory and uh, just look for anything out of the norm. Like if, if you notice that there's a .js file that was just modified, you know, December 22nd or something like that, take a look at it and compare it. Uh, pull the old copy off your backup um, and make sure that your system hasn't been compromised. I can't stress that enough. And actually, to be honest with you, you can actually do that for your entire C drive on your Horizon connection server. And technically, um, if you are if you have a very quiet server, um, the only time you should ever see too much activity as far as date modified files go is when you're doing Windows updates or if you are per, uh, performing the VMware Horizon Log4j mitigation. So that's, uh, it's been hectic. Make sure you update your servers. Now, the next thing, um, I've got some cool stuff going on with uh, Synology. Um, I actually uh, picked up a, uh, I'm not gonna get too much into this because I wanna save it for the post, but I want to compare my HPE MSA 2040 SAN to a Synology DS1621+. Plus. Um, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because uh, I'm planning on moving soon to a condo. And I guess you could say that enterprise home lab equipment isn't too condo friendly. So I'm going to be repurposing, uh, reprovisioning all my servers. And um, re uh, I'm going to be purchasing some new servers, decommissioning the old servers. And I'm going to be deploying this DS1621 Plus with six times six terabyte um, I believe they are WD Red Pro drives. 
Um, and Synology was nice enough to send me out uh, two, I think it's 800 gig NVMe cache disks to populate in the NVMe slots. And they also sent me enough RAM to max the unit out. So I'm going to be doing a comparison on performance between the MSA 2040 and the DS1621 Plus with all the uh, the hardware loaded up inside of it. Um, and I'm also going to be doing some other benchmarks, just comparing, uh, you know, the six times six terabyte WD Red Pro drives with and without NVMe, just to give you an idea as to uh, how much of a performance gain and what type of performance gain you get when. Um, adding NVMe to your Synology NASes. Now, some of you might be giving me a little bit of flack, you know, getting rid of enterprise hardware, going towards like a Synology disk station that goes on your desk. However, keep in mind that in the old days, back in the day, um, I actually ran services on the equipment that I now call my home lab. Um, I no longer need high uptimes because I'm not providing services off that equipment. And um, so now my home lab is a true home lab where I don't require redundancy and all the fancy stuff. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I'm doing this, moving into a condo. I want to get away from that $500 a month power bill. Um, if you haven't seen my video on my home lab, make sure you check it out. It's, it's pretty excessive. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to be pretty interesting and I'm looking forward to the move. That's another reason why it's been so long since I've done one of these videos. Um, a couple other things that have happened since the last post. Um, there was a big issue worldwide with SSL certificates where a, I think it was the DST root X3 certificate, one of their root CAs expired. This caused a whole bunch of issue for companies and people that were using Let's Encrypt certificates. Um, I did a blog post, uh, to try and help people understand why this was happening and how to uh, mitigate the issue or resolve the issue in their environment by installing the new root CA that uh, DST provided. I'll be providing a link in the description. And, uh, you know, this post literally for a period of three weeks, I'm not even kidding you, 100 to 200,000 unique views per day. It was, I, I don't know if they were unique, but 100 to 200,000 views per day on this blog post. The amount of bandwidth consumed was absolutely crazy. I have that chat service. I was getting thousands of chats to the point where I couldn't even respond to them. It was overloading my phone. I actually had to disable the chat service on that particular blog post because it was getting so much traffic. One of the reasons why is because there's a lot of people that are using old Mac operating systems. There's a lot of people using old Windows 7 operating systems that weren't getting the root CA updates from their vendors servers. Like for example, with Windows 7, they weren't getting the root CAs from Windows Update. This goes to show why it's important to make sure that you have a supported operating system. This is just a certificate, but you're also missing important security updates. So make sure you get it done. Anyways, it was targeted towards the IT crowd, but it, it, I, I had grandmothers reaching out to me, asking me to help them get their computers working because they couldn't view any websites on the internet. So that was kind of interesting. Other news, uh, VMware released a patch uh, vSphere 7 update three. I guess it caused quite a bit of problems. I upgraded my environment, didn't have any problems, knock on wood, um, but I guess they pulled the update and there's a whole bunch of us waiting for uh, the next steps on uh, what to do with that. But I guess that's taking uh, lower priority with everything going on with the uh, log4j vulnerabilities. Um, since my last video, there's been a couple new blog posts. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of Windows Server 2022 videos. Make sure you check it out. Installing Server 2022, Active Directory, deploying it on 2022, uh, installing certification when Microsoft certificate <laughs> authority services or whatever it's called on uh, server 2022. Uh, I also did a uh, blog post and video on VMware vCSA, the uh, vCenter server appliance uh, updates, tips and tricks to make sure that your upgrades and updates are successful. So make sure you check that out if you're running VMware in your environment. Um, I also did an update, uh, sorry, a blog post covering Synology uh, NASes and backing up to the uh, C2 storage cloud. Very cool stuff. Very affordable uh, cloud backup services for your Synology NAS. Uh, you can use this to back up your files, uh, file shares on your Synology NAS to the C2 cloud. I did a demonstration of the backup process and the restoration process. It works fantastic. Highly recommend it, especially if you have a Synology NAS. And I just did a couple blog posts and videos on how to install Windows 11 on systems that don't support Windows 11. Uh, this is for a few particular reasons. If you're missing secure boot, you won't be able to install it. If you're missing a TPM 2.0 chip, you won't be able to install it. Those blog posts will tell you how to install it with those things going on. Um, 
other than that, life has been pretty busy. I think uh, there was a period of 22 days in November and December where I did uh, nine flights. That was pretty hectic. I was actually doing pretty good until about the uh, eighth flight. I started feeling some of the fatigue with uh, all the, the flights. Thankfully, uh, flight number nine coming home. I was on, uh, I guess they commissioned a new Dreamliner for uh, freight services because of the highway washout between uh, Vancouver, British Columbia and Calgary. Uh, they brought in a Dreamliner for that route to do cargo. I was lucky enough to get bumped up to a pod on my ninth flight coming home, so that made it pretty nice. Um, took a little vacation to Jasper, Alberta by myself, a work away from home vacation. It was not too bad. I, was, I think I was up there for about four or five days by myself. It was fun. Also, I did a review on a Ymaxit, uh, I think 13 inch portable LCD display. This thing is the cat's meow. Um, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately and one of the biggest problems that I've had when traveling is efficiency and productivity with a laptop. I've got a Lenovo X1 Carbon, I think it's a 2013 generation. And um, you know, you can bring an external mouse, which makes it really easy to use, but you always miss that second display. And so I started shopping around and I found this YMAX at 13 inch pro, uh, 13 inch uh, dual display that I've been dragging around with me on all my trips. I absolutely love it. My, my mobile work efficiency is 98% of me being here at my office. I love it. I can't say enough good things about this display. I bring it everywhere with me. There's no battery inside of it. Some of you might think that's a con. However, when you're traveling, it means it's a pro because you can put it in your luggage because there's no battery. You're not allowed to have batteries in luggage on airplanes. So you don't have to bring it with you on the plane, which is super nice and super handy. Um, I originally didn't like the fact it didn't have a battery, but after doing those nine flights, trust me, it's nice not having to lag around a second display with you um, when you're on the plane. I like to keep things very small, tight and portable as far as what I bring with me. So make sure you check out that video review. Um, other than that, just lots of work, lots and lots of work. Again, another reason why I haven't been able to do one of these videos, I've been working every day, every hour, weekends, holidays, maybe getting one or two hours to myself every night. That's it. And then the one or two hours in the morning when I go to the gym, um, not complaining, but it's just been busy. I haven't been able to keep up with the blog posts um, as much as I've wanted to. There's a lot of blog posts I want to get done. There's a lot of videos I want to get done. Uh, my apologies for being so delayed on these, but uh, the content will be coming soon. I've got to make some changes and start dealing with some uh, scheduling a little bit better. So stay tuned for all that. Anyways, I'm going to stop boring you. It's going to stop rambling. Uh, if there's anything you want to see in future videos, if there's any feedback for my vlog, uh, leave it in the comments. If you haven't already, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Again, happy new year. Here's to a new year new possibilities, new opportunities, and hopefully we can get rid of all the stuff that was dragging us behind in 2019 and 2020 and 2021. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyways, guys, have a fantastic day. I'll chat with you later.